We are now in the Nissan Leaf 40 kilowatt hour and today I'm going to do the range test in winter. Yes, I've never actually done it before. I've tested this car several times and that was mainly because of rapid gate and actually there's some great news about the rapid gate. Seems like uh, the later Nissan, the newer Nissan Leafs, uh, they have fixed the rapid gate. Now I tried this car now, uh, it seems to not be near enough. So uh, it was delivered around um, was in February this year. So I guess I have to try it later. But okay, we will do the range test. So um, I'm just juicing up now. We have to wait until 100%. So it's going to take a while. Actually, I've been here 75 minutes, one hour and 15 minutes and oh. So the display here shows uh, that we have 99% and uh, this one is weird. No, this is um, incorrect. Uh, we are not receiving 6 kilowatt right now because uh, I did the homework this time. So I uh, have set up Leaf Spy and according to Leaf Spy, uh, what? It finished. What? The charging finished uh, at 96%. That is weird. I mean, uh, okay, let's try to restart the charger. Okay, it's doing the handshake. Uh, I think we are charging. Okay, let's fire up the car. So let's see here. Let's go here, all right. See, uh, this one reports that we are getting 4.5 kilowatts. Yeah, and if you see here, what you want to look at is the, is Leaf Spy. So Leaf Spy reports one kilowatt charging well actually no it's it's going almost almost down to zero so you know um this is dependent on temperature so i think the reason why we don't get a uh, hundred percent now is because uh, it might be too cold outside i'm not sure oh the heater is pulling a lot oh you see this one the pink one that's the ptc heater so leaf has a ptc heater and a heat pump so right now the ptc heater is uh, helping uh, heating up the battery. So you see that combined here we pull like four kilowatt something, right? So this one will show you what uh, like, oh, okay It might look like we are pulling 3.2 kilowatt and we are charging at 3.2 kilowatt But actually we are not because the heater and heat pump is taking some of it and almost nothing goes to uh, the battery Actually, um, we have to wait a little bit see that the PTC is going to uh, cool down now literally there there and then the uh, heat pump takes over and now you start seeing uh, this this one here is input to the battery or you can see it there at 1.9 kilowatt that's the charging rate right now so that was a bit weird because uh, the charging stopped apparently it looks like it was done charging but uh, when we uh, re-plugged it it continued charging so really useful to have this uh, I should set this uh, dongle for um, uh, TM spy also for Tesla you see just open here and then you put it in there but thing is that Tesla uses a slightly different um, plug so for me I bought this one from eBay just plug and play pretty much uh, and it's interesting thing is that okay so it's charging at 2 kilowatt right okay now I'm gonna switch off the heater Let's see what happens You see, suddenly charging speed goes up to 3.6 kilowatt, so a uh, 4 kilowatt now. So it's like, um, because I think the, the way it works is that the car is charging now, and then if you use the heater, you will pull power from the battery. So uh, there is no like way for uh, for the car to say that, hey, okay. I want to charge at 3.7 kilowatt and then I also want to use some heater. Yeah, there's no way to like bypass the power somehow. That would have been great. So, um, if I want to charge fast now, I need to not keep the heater on, but it will be cold outside. I mean, it will be cold in here. It's, it's kind of cold outside, minus two degrees. Well, this one says minus two. Um, this one says actually minus 1.5, so this is like, yes, godlike tool, oh yes, TM Spy, well this is TM Spy Pro, yeah. Okay, you know what, I think I will leave now, I've been here one and a half hours charging, so uh, uh, we are at 97% here, and this is what we can trust, 97%, this is the displayed state of charge, you see 98 here, 
uh, the same as is displayed here, 98%. But um, I could probably wait one more hour just to squeeze in that uh, 3%. But we can always just extrapolate the numbers. But normally, if you start driving from home, you will probably charge a slow charge in your garage. You don't care about uh, the car sitting there for one hour. But right now, for me, it's a little bit cumbersome. And we're getting very slow charging speed, uh, so um, yeah, let's uh, get going. So I will show you. So I will use this one, Eco Mode. Okay, Eco Mode is on. E pit pedal is off. You can see it in the display here. You have probably seen it already. Um, and then we will cruise at 90 kilometers per hour. So yes, let's get cracking. Oh yes, we are finally on the move. Uh, it's very foggy here today. Um, I don't know why, but uh, ProPilot is not working. The auto steer symbol is not active. So, um, hmm, that's weird. I'll try to activate it. But okay, well, anyway, so there is this scale over here soon uh, coming up. So, yes, we want to check the weight, weight distribution at standard, and then we keep going. Whoa, we can barely see the display from here. Wow. <laughs> This is really thick. So let's see, I'm guessing 850 on the front axle. So a bit better. Uh, oh, uh, oh, 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 I was wrong. 960, oh, okay, 960. All right, and total weight of the car. There. 1.7, oh, 1 1.7 uh, tons, metric tons, okay. All right, and then the next, the, the rear axle should be uh, quick mouth 720, hmm. 740. There, yeah, 740. That makes sense. All right, okay. Then I have to do the the calculation of uh, weight distribution afterwards. But uh, yeah, this one is um, front heavy. Actually, it feels like it's based on those numbers that it's more front heavy than some of the other cars I've tried, uh, like. Um, Ionic was 50-50 balanced. Um, Soul was more front heavy. Nero is also front, but this one seems to be even more. Okay, yeah, let's hammer it. Okay, we're back on the road. I think I, I must have pressed some buttons, the wrong buttons. But uh, yes, Pro Pilot is active now. Yeah, I'm a noob. Oh, I'm a wind, wind, wind. Check wind. Almost no wind today. All right. So, but it's wet road, so that is uh, a disadvantage compared to some of the other results or some of the other tests where I had dry road. So yes, we have to assume uh, somewhat high consumption. Well, we can look now, by the way. Uh, so far, what did we get? Um, uh, we've been going downhill a bit. Yeah, so this this is a little bit deceiving. Like it seems like, oh, are we only averaging 170? No, we went downhill from uh, Demenez, so it will stabilize. I'm guessing maybe 180, which is uh, in the menu just here. 180, which is the same as um, uh, Neo I tested recently. We'll let's see, see. Okay, yeah, we've been driving for uh, 19 minutes, and um, I'm going to show you something here. Um, why TM Spy, why not the TM Spy, the Leaf Spy. Yeah, TM Spy is for Tesla, <laughs> but Leaf are the same, same people who made the, the app. Why Leaf Spy is a must-have for um, for Leaf owners because uh, here you see that um, GOM, you know, the the gas meter is estimating that uh, we have 196 kilometers of range left. But do we actually have 196? Can we trust it? Because uh, this this one ba is based on previous uh, consumption uh, for the past I don't know how many kilometers, and I've been hammering it before I came here. But you see. We can assume that we, we we should be able to average 180 watt hour kilometer, right? So this one claims 195, right? But if you look here, you see that. Um, okay, th this one is cool because it will estimate uh, how much range we have uh, based on 205. So we set the constant ourselves down to 5%. Yeah, I have a 5% margin. So now if I tap down this one, oh, sorry for the bump, tap it down to uh, 180 like this. Okay, then you see that um, it estimates we'll make we'll be able to drive 154, not 195 like the car is estimating. So I pointed out this before in earlier uh, runs that 
the car's uh, gum, the car's gasometer is a little bit too uh, optimistic. So um, you you have to either calculate by yourself or use um, leaf spy. But then this one is more realistic. Yeah, 150. Okay, this is it. This is a turnaround point, and uh, I've checked it before. According to Google Maps, it is exactly 46 kilometers from uh, Nepenes to this point. And if you look here, it reported as uh, 45.6, 45.7, oh hang on, oh, oops, sorry, there, yeah, so um, that is close enough, I think uh, we can trust this uh, odometer here, or the, the trip meter here. We have been driving for one hour and uh, we are down to 50% on that display and then 46 on this display, yeah. But uh, look, I learned something new now. So uh, the steering uh, the steering assist is not active. See, it's grayed out. And what what I do, I can't make it work. So what I found out is that there's this button over here, steering wheel button here. It will disable all the steer. So what you do is you disable it. Come on, there, and then you enable it again. Okay, and then it's on. Yeah. <laughs> I guess the leaf owners already know this. We are now at Espa. We just turn around. This is going to be the final run back to Nebenes. And you see, we've been driving for 1 hour and 36 minutes, done 138 kilometers. And uh, GOM says we have 49 kilometers left. And if you look here, this one uh, tells me that I have 54 kilometers left. So now this one is being, this one is more realistic now. Um, and we have 29 kilometers, so it should be safe. Yeah. yeah let's hope nothing crazy happens. <laughs> Damn! Look at this fog. It is so thick. Uh, we are almost at the finish line now, and 12% left. And you see the temperature outside is plus two. I mean, sorry, it's minus two degrees Celsius. And for some reason. Um, the car decides to only use PTC. I, I've seen, I've watched this uh, throughout the whole trip and it's only running the PTC, it's not, not the pink bar there. It didn't use uh, heat pump for some reason. I don't know why. Uh, I know that heat pump is less efficient when it's colder, but uh, okay. Uh, I mean, already now, that's a little bit early, right? But I don't know, maybe the car knows better than me. Oh yes, we are finally back at the supercharger and the Fortum Fast Yarder is so crowded here today. All the four stalls are occupied. And, and also the superchargers are almost full. Yeah, hell full. So uh, I met my cousin. They are here with the, with the Tesla. Yeah, they're on the way from Uppdal to Christian Sun. But um, anyway, if you look at the numbers and look at the screenshot, you see that I arrived. Uh, well, I arrived after driving 168 kilometers, and if you look at the other screenshot of uh, Leaf Spy, you see that Leaf Spy claims that we can drive another 25.5 kilometers uh, down to 5%. And remember that I started with 97%. I didn't want to wait for that uh, last one. So if we do the math here, we can assume that we can we can drive 200 kilometers in winter, and that is actually not too bad at all. Like that is slightly better than uh, Ionic actually at these speeds yeah i know lots of ionic owners will protest and say no i can drive more than 200 kilometers in winter no i try i tried i couldn't drive 200 kilometers with ionic uh so i mean leaf okay re leaf replicates but it has a bigger battery than ionic and as long as you can drive too fast like that's re reality in norway and many other countries that you have to follow the traffic you know there's no autobahn you can hammer then then this one is slightly better <laughs> Yeah, so, uh, but uh, the, I have another problem, yeah. As you see here, um, well, I, I, when I look at the screenshot, we arrived with, with 33.4 degrees Celsius and it's gone up now. And you know that initial uh, temperature is what uh, sets the maximum uh, charging power for the whole charging session. So we are only getting... Oh, what happened? Oh, I touched something. Shit! Hold on, hold on. Uh, there's so many numbers here. I think this you, you switch it between day and day and night. Yeah. Anyway, but um, 
Look here. We are getting only 35 kilowatts, so the car is now rapid gating. Yeah, it means that uh, the battery temperature was too high. Um, actually, I was a little bit surprised that during the trip, you know, it was minus two to minus eight at the lowest. But even when driving at 90 kilometers per hour, which is not considered to be that fast, um, the temperature didn't really go down. Like I was hoping that it could drop to below 30, but it stayed, it was hovering around 33 for the longest time. So uh, you saw, I mean, in the beginning, uh, when I plugged in here before the test, uh, I was getting 45 kilowatt, yes. But then the battery was colder. It was like 28, 27, yeah. So this is the reality of um, the cars today, but um, there will be, I mean, there's already a fix, which this car doesn't have yet. I'm not sure if it's a hardware fix or just a software fix, but um, I will test this later. Um, yeah. Okay, so anyway, uh, I will juice up a little bit more and then I'll go home. So normally I would do the 120 kilometers per hour test around here, but today is just, no, not possible because there's too much traffic that's one thing and we have the fog and I heard from my cousin there that the fog is from here and all the way to Uta or whatever like lots of fog and people are driving too slow so I cannot do the 120 test here and I'm not sure how relevant it is because it seems like most leaf drivers they don't drive too fast anyway I, I've seen most of them drive around 100 uh, ish yeah, about 100 kilometers per hour on the motorway so um yeah i i said you guys gonna yell at me so whatever right they were okay but i hope you guys enjoyed this video it was fun for me to finally found out find out how far a leaf can go in winter in summer it's probably 250 yeah maybe i'll do it again in summer so hope you guys enjoyed this video so thank you for watching and bye bye